I think I've been, in a strange way, I think I've been subconsciously thinking about Ludoslavsky for a while. Um, I think it's probably because I've worked with um, Azapeka as a composer and through kind of con conversations with them and, and kind of talking about music in general and kind of early influences and, and things like that, I, I feel like Ludoslavsky has, has kind of been in my consciousness for a while. And it's, it's a great pleasure to have a chance to actually play his music now. It's so funny to me because, of course, of course, when I saw Ed Libidum, I was like, oh, yes, Ed Libidum. And I kept looking at the score, and because I'm so used to doing very um, kind of thorny contemporary works that are very kind of rhythmically complex, I kept looking at it, and I knew there was a part of me that realized, yes, it's supposed to be totally Ed Libidum, but I couldn't let go of the fact that I wanted to align everything. <laughs> with, in, at least in my head, with, with the different orchestral parts. And um, I actually called Steve Stuckey, and I, I think I asked him the same question literally four times. I was like, are you sure? Are you really sure? And then I finally, and, and you know, finally I was able to let go, and I was like, oh, so when he marks ad libitum, he actually really means ad libitum. And I wasn't used to that at all. <laughs> I see rhythm as a very kind of primal aspect of who we are as human beings. And then this idea of, of melody and what we conceive of melody is almost, I think in a sense, and pitch is almost a societal thing. So this kind of play um, between pitches, um, it's kind of, it kind of feels like, like the glue that kind of ties everybody together in a sense. It's also interesting because in the score there are markings uh, where there's certain pitches that are important in the beginning, uh, but the rest is kind of marked literally ad libitum. So, so, so there's just, for example, there like the D flat, D flat, D flat, and then D natural. But the, the in between notes in the in the kind of falling, it, it's a falling pattern, but it's not. He he doesn't actually mark actual pitches. What's interesting to me about the third movement, which is ad libitum again is that not only is it rhythmically ad libitum, but also the sense of pitch and how he puts it together. For example, here, it, it, we're working around a B flat. It's different pitches in the orchestra, but in, in the string section. I think I'm the kind of person that doesn't believe in the ultimate correct way of performing anything. I want every performance to be different and to have a composition in which literally the way that you layer with the orchestra and, co and color is, is going to be different um, is kind of an expansion of that and I like that idea of expansion. Whether you're talking about like ad libitum and then within and going back within like a, a kind of structure, certain structure of rhythm, and then expanding again, 
ad libitum and then going back to rhythmic structure. I feel like that idea of, of expansion and, and contraction runs throughout that piece. And you could, and it's, you can almost use it as a metaphor for almost every part of the piece, which, which I like. <laughs> I'm excited. Um, I've, I've admired, of course, uh, the Philharmonia for a long time, and I love Esapeka's work as well, both as a composer and as a conductor. So I'm just, I'm thrilled to make music with him. I think a lot of it is going to be about trusting to let go of that, um, because it's hard, in a way, to not play together. <laughs>